Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the James Julia Auction House taking a look at some of the guns that they are going to be selling in their upcoming Spring of 2018 firearms auction. And today we have a fairly scarce first pattern or flat side Winchester Model 1895 rifle. This was, as the name implies, the first pattern of the 1895 that was actually produced. And they're pretty scarce today because Winchester only made these until about serial number five or six thousand, just a couple of years, and then they they kind of went back through and retrofitted a lot of the design to make various uh, production sort of improvements, make things more efficient to manufacture. So not only is this an early slab side, it is also a musket style of 1895 rifle. Uh, as with all of the Winchesters, Winchester lever rifles, you could order these guns in a variety of different patterns, different barrel lengths, different stock lengths, different magazine sizes. Uh, although with the 1895 you only had the one magazine option. Uh, and muskets were a relatively uncommon uh, style for people to order, so it's pretty cool to see one that is both a very early pattern and an uncommon model. Now the 1895 was the first of the Winchesters designed specifically for smokeless powder. Uh, it has a box magazine here, a five round box magazine, instead of a tubular magazine, again being the first Winchester to uh, break away from the tubular magazine, and that was done to allow easy use of spitzer or pointed bullets. Uh, bullets that might run a risk of detonating in a magazine tube if you had a pointed bullet coming into contact with the primer of the cartridge in front of it. So these became quite popular as hunting rifles and sporting rifles. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt, uh, of particular note, had one in 405 Winchester caliber, which he called his big medicine, and he took on African safari. They're really popular, uh, great rifles, a, a great piece of Americana. So let's take a closer look, and I'll show you the differences between the first pattern and the subsequent second pattern. These are known as slab side or flat side rifles because the side of the receiver is entirely flat. As opposed to the later model, like this one, that has a scalloped cut in the receiver to reduce weight. Now when we look at the side here, you can see obviously that changed, but also the style of the magazine changed a bit. This angle is a little shallower, where this one tends to go more close, more close to vertical. The top of the bolt also changed, where originally it had been rounded on the early pattern guns, the first pattern. Uh, it was cut flat instead on the second pattern, the later guns. So these early slab sides uh, only exist until about, well, they exist into the serial number range of five to six thousand. Uh, Winchester assembled these guns to order, and so they the these don't end at a specific serial number point. Instead, they stopped making the receivers, they started making uh, the second pattern receivers, and then they used these up as they got orders in. So uh, in between five and 6,000 you will find a mix of flat side and uh, bevel cut uh, 1895s. And then once you get past 6,000 it's pretty much all late pattern guns. Now this particular one is in caliber 3040, as you can see here, marked on the barrel 30 US. Um, US was the standard designation for the 30, 3040 cartridge, also called 30 Army, because at the time it was the US standard rifle cartridge. And of course you'll also find the standard early pattern model designation on uh, these slab side 1895s, just Winchester model 1895 on the Tang. This particular one, by the way, is serial number 808, so really a quite early example. Now probably the most significant change that was made between the first and the second pattern of the guns has to do with the safety. On these early guns there's a little button right there, and you can see when I push the trigger in that button rises. Just like that. That button is on a little flat spring there. And the way this works is that if there's no hole for that button to go into, the trigger can't be pressed backwards. So as you start to close the lever, when you get to here, uh, where the cartridge is getting pushed into the chamber and it could potentially fire out of battery, that button prevents the trigger from being pulled until the lever is completely in place like that. Now we can dry fire it, like so. Before, even if I have the lever just slightly open like this, nothing will happen. Now that was an adequate safety mechanism as long as it worked, but this is not the most durable sort of system to do that, and you really don't want one of these firing out of battery. So they changed it for the second pattern. There we will find a safety built into the lever itself. There's a spring hook here, and that latches into the lever. 
You can see it push back there and snap into place. When you open the gun using this lever, when you open the gun, you have to pull this lever down, and what that does is disengage with this catch. So if the catch is not, in, is not fully engaged, so if we have the rifle open just like that, you can't pull the trigger. It doesn't do anything, hence preventing the rifle from firing out a battery. Once it's fully in place, then the hammer will fall. This is a much more robust system, and this is what you would see in the vast majority of 1895s. By the way, the sharp-eyed among you may have noticed that there's a US inspector's cartouche on this particular musket. It does not have stripper clip guides, and it is marked US. Uh, turns out the US military actually ordered 10,000 Winchester 1895 muskets, uh, and then cancelled the order after only 100 of them had been delivered. Uh, leaving the remaining 9,900 rifles to be sold on various surplus markets. But that is a story for another video. I mentioned I would get back to this, this plaque on the wrist that says, Bequest of Major Henry E. Smith. I uh, don't know exactly who Major Smith was, beyond the fact that he was a member of the, um, the Society of Veterans of Indian Wars of the United States, which was sort of a, a VA organization, obviously for vets of the Indian Wars. We don't know uh, who he was bequesting this rifle to. Uh, we do know that the rifle was actually shipped a year after the formation of the society, so probably someone involved in that society. It's entirely possible it was something that he wanted to donate to the society, or have them use as a fundraiser, uh, but there's really no way to know for sure. Well, these musket pattern slab sides are really quite rare rifles to find, so if you have a collection of Winchester 1895s, or if you like rifles that have, for example, historical provenance to uh, American military officers, could be just the thing for you. Take a look at the description text below, and you'll find a link to the Julia catalog page on this rifle, where you can see their photos, their description, their value estimates, and everything else that you would need to place a bid on this right over the web. Thanks for watching.